Hi, I'm Chris Martirano here with our great friends at Sweetwater Sound. I always love being here with all the experts around me. I'm going to be showing you Kurzweil's PC4. This is an evolutionary machine, in some ways very revolutionary. For Kurzweil, it's the first time they've produced an instrument with 256 voices of polyphony. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the specification information out of the way. The instrument features an 88-note hammer-weighted action. It's a new action for Kurzweil. It's a Medelli action, which is very nice. It's got a very nice feel to it. Key tops feel really great. The instrument also features, of course, four pairs, or two pairs, rather, of quarter-inch TRS balanced outputs. Now they've also added onto the back two quarter-inch TRS inputs, which are great for bringing audio into the instrument, in addition to the eighth-inch jack. There's an A and a B USB connector on the back for connectivity, also for real-time MIDI control over USB, and for storage. You can also plug in a thumb drive and drop all your patches to a thumb drive and reload them at another time. Really great. The instrument features flash memory, which is a proprietary and patented technology from Kurzweil. It features two gigabytes of internal sound memory for the patches and the samples that Kurzweil gives you. And then there's an additional two gigabytes for the user to load in what you would like into the instrument. Very, very powerful instrument. In addition, they've now given you nine knobs in addition to the nine sliders and nine switches on the interface for real-time control of your patches. They've done some really cool things and standardized the controls, so you're not wondering what do they do patch to patch. I'll talk more about that as we get into the programs. They've taken away the cheek block and now brought the pitch and mod wheels up to the top panel. This makes the instrument more portable. You can put it in the back seat of many cars, unlike some of the longer instruments with the pitch and mod wheel out on the left side. They've made the instrument under 29 pounds. In fact, it's 28 and a half pounds, which to me, I smile when I say it because I can actually carry it under an arm rather than carry it with a friend. So very, very nice addition. There's two foot pedal inputs in the back that'll accept either a single foot switch or you can use a continuous foot switch for half damper control, which is great. They also will allow you to plug two pedals into a single jack using the TRS configuration. There's a CC pedal input in the back, in addition to standard MIDI connectors. So the instrument is really fully featured, and it has a ton of connectivity capabilities. There's a couple of other specs I'll talk about as we move through the instrument. One of the most glaring and obvious is the beautiful display, which is shared also on the Forte, the big brother of the PC4. Very, very powerful instrument with great sounds. They provided a few cool features as well for the user for instant re recalling of patches. They have what they now call quick access banks. This was found on earlier models like the PC3 and the K2600, allowing you to store your patches and then quickly recall them in any order that you like. In addition to categories, you can select patches through categories or you can actually type in numerically through the numeric keypad and get directly to a program. So let's dig in and listen to what it sounds like. I'm going to start with the most obvious sound, which is the nine foot concert grand piano. It's a very expressive instrument with a lot of dynamic range. The controls on the front panel allow me to tailor that piano. 
I'm always presented with EQ on the first knobs going left to right. I have a bass gain on a fixed bass shelf. Then I have a parametric midsection with frequency and gain. And then I have a treble shelf. So these allow me to dial in the type of timbre that I'm looking for. In this case, maybe I'll just take one of the mid frequencies and take it down a little bit. Cut some mids, add a little high. Maybe cut a little of the bottom. Maybe I want to add some chorusing at a touch of a button. Of course, there's many other piano patches made from this nine foot grand. This is a seven foot Japanese piano. I love this piano for jazz application or for rock, certain types of rock music as well. Really fits nicely. Behind all the pianos is a pad that's hiding behind this variation button right over the master volume. And if I press the variation button, we'll, we'll introduce a pad now to the sound. Again with it off, no pad on pad. Again, a lot of programs are made from those piano samples. So this is one is called Bright. We'll go back and just listen to one or two more of the pianos. This is called Concert Piano. It's a very warm piano, obviously not a lot of bright end. The concert name tells you that. Let's listen to some of the other categories. We have electric pianos. Here is a uh, Tyne electric piano. This is one of two different recordings that are in here. I like this one, it's called Suitcase EP. And I'm gonna show you using the controls just how much you can modify it. Again, we're not really doing any editing. We're just using the front panel controls to change the sound to tailor to what we wanna hear.
Very clean representation. You can hear the tine barking sound when you dig in. Very smooth response. Very, very nice. So I'm just going to dress it up a little bit. I'll hit a phaser button. Immediately, the controls have been assigned to phaser. I have phaser amount on a slider. I have phaser rate on a knob, so I can adjust the phaser. Maybe I want a little more bright end bite, so I'll turn up the treble gain. Little reverb. Maybe I'll put a little delay on it and I'll put a very short delay. That's good. Very easy to change the sound dramatically. I'm going to do something now that I haven't done with the other patches. I'm just going to make a quick split. All I have to do is hit the split button and I'm presented with a bass automatically. Nice down there. This is a dynamic bass so it's going to change as I play soft. There won't be any finger slapping and then as I play harder you'll get a slap. So very simple splits, very simple to layer. And again, behind these sounds, there's always something hiding on the variation button. In this case, I have a flute pad. It's a very, very beautiful sounding instrument. Some of the other categories you'd expect, you have claves. Very nice, that's an AC rocker position. Easy to put phaser on, again, just press the phaser button and you have a little more, slower phaser rate. Chorusing. I love the fact that it's just right there. If you want something else, delay, it's right there. You have the controls on the top for rate and amount. Really quick. Of course, KB3 mode is represented in the instrument. KB3 mode is the modeled tone wheel organ that Kurzweil has continually developed uh, now for decades, I would say. The display is beautiful in that now it reflects the drawbar settings in real time. This is great. So you get a visual representation of what's going on. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you a little bit of the editing because for me, it's a little too much distortion on this. So what do I do? I press an edit button and I'm presented now with what my controls are assigned to. 
I can scroll down and I can see every assignment that's going on and I can get down to where I'm going to finally see my overdrive distortion amount I can go over and I can reduce it So, a little bit over the top for me, but rock and roll is rock and roll. There are many different organ settings as well. So this one's called Hot Tube. The controls are set up to control all of the organ parameters you'd want to control, such as your drawbars, your switches are controlling things like chorus vibrato and percussion settings. And on this program, they're set up to do EQ. I still have my bass frequencies and my treble, so I can dial in the organ according to exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to go into some other categories. Kurzweil was always known for orchestral sounds, such as strings and brass and woodwinds. So right now, the string sounds in here are from these beautiful recordings. This is called Studio A Strings. I'll just play a little bit with this string section sound. I love them, and there are many different expressive programs based on these string recordings as well. Again, you can shape them using the interface immediately. Anytime you've done any changes to the interface or shaped in any way, the save light is illuminated, allowing you to save and name the program. So in a way, this is very simple editing. If you want to get under the hood and see what's going on, it's very deep editing possible. There will also be a Mac editor, uh, PC editor, and an iOS editor available for the PC4 in the near future, allowing external editing if that's your passion. I'm going to show a few more programs. As we get into the synths, there's some beautiful pads. Let's listen to another one of these beautiful evolving pads.
you get the idea. And there's also some more that are very standard in there that are very useful also. Let's look at some of the synth programs. You have classic saws. <laughs> I'm adjusting delay time, so you're hearing the delay movements. We'll just add a very slow delay. Maybe more of it. I love this uh, real-time control. I'll say it a lot. So now, if I like that, I would decide I might want to layer that with something. Maybe I'll layer it with a piano. save at any time I want, name it, whatever I like, and save it. Very, very simple. Kurzweil, as I was talking before about their, their legacy of orchestral sounds, I mean, it's renowned that they're in all kinds of Broadway pits, they're in churches all over the world. Um, I'd like to show one of the multis that shows off some of the, the orchestral sounds. This one also is found on a few of the other Kurzweil instruments called the Shire. just a beautiful combination. We'll listen to a handful of sounds and then I'd like to jump into the editing and show you a little bit about what's going on under the hood since this is probably the most powerful editing platform in hardware, in my opinion, on the face of the earth. So we'll look at uh, some of the guitar sounds which are outstanding. You can hear a lot of expression. Notice I'm bending individual notes. This was something Kurzweil developed many, many years ago, allowing you to sustain a variety of notes and then bend only a single tone. This allows you to play very authentic sounding steel pedal or guitar-like phrases. Some of the other guitars, they have a very warm Strat kind of sound.
can hear in that example, in this patch, they didn't assign the key bend, so you get everything bends. But again, I like to show something that's going on in the editing. So in the editing, I press edit, I'm going over to layer, and where we see bend, here it's assigned to all, but I'm gonna put it to key, and now you'll watch what happens. So now these are assigned to key bend. So I can, with a simple edit, change that guitar to behave the way I like. Compressed phaser. Really cool guitar. Many, many cool guitars. Acoustic also. Um, that's enough for the categories. There's drums and percussion. Some of the drums, actually, I do have to show. They did a great job on these. The percussion section and the drums were programmed by someone who really, really plays drums himself, so he knew what he was looking for. I'm going to go to some of the more exceptional, crazier drums that I think show up a lot. There's some great stuff in here. There are so many, really, I, I could take up a day just showing you, and they all respond to these controls. You can dial them into great stuff. So what would drums be good for without a sequencer? Well, on the instrument, there's a fully functional 16-track sequencer that gives you piano roll style editing in addition to track editing. And you find all of the nice luxuries, you know, the things that you would expect, like quantizing and the ability to do things like uh, remove a single note or move a single note in time. Um, but there's some other cool things that are really nice in here. The way the metronome allow you to sign whatever sound you like to it, the fact that you can obviously change meter, you can change things like the count off, the number of measures of count off, etc. They did a very nice job. And then you get a full function mixer section that you can use then to mix your sequences. That allows you the controls over panning and volume. Some of the other nice things they've done is to allow you to audition changes you've made to the sequence before saving it and then saving it. So very cool. The sequencer in here can be synced up as well to the 16 arpeggiators, which are very cool. And now some of the new things that we're going to go into editing and show you. In the programming, they've provided some very cool tools, but then they've provided these new, they're called sequencers essentially, and they're applied to MIDI parameters. So they're called CC or Continuous Controller Sequences. I'm going to press Edit and I'm going to scroll over and we're going to see our arpeggiator settings. We can go into the arpeggiator. We have a step arpeggiator if we want to actually do step sequencing or we have all of these different arpeggiated modes that they give us. They've already made many for you. Minor up and down, steady, crazy octaves. These are very fun and you can apply them to different sounds like drums or to instrument sounds. But then in addition to the arpeggiator, you have these CC sequences. You can apply them to really cool parameters such as filter frequency, filter resonance, um, frequency control, so you can actually control pitch, um, attack segment of your envelope, things of this nature. I'm going to show a few examples of this, but then there's also presets that they've given you. This is filter frequency and resonance with some randomization. This is an expression triangle wave. Again, it'll control your gain, bring it up, bring it down. 
This is mono power, sync to arpeggiator. So again, you can sync arpeggiator, these CC sequences, and the sequencer all in real time, again, to your effects, so your delay could even be syn synced. So this is really cool stuff, and of course it'll sync to MIDI clock. So I'm going to show you a multi that I made here. A multi is Kurzweil's terminology for when you layer or split. And by the way, you can layer or split up to 16 times. You have 16 zones, which is very powerful. So this is one I call Orchestra Pad, and it's using, if we just press Edit, it's using a number of pads. One is called Alpha Centauri, one is called High Vox Cloud, and the other is Pastoral Orchestra. And then I put a VA1, which is their modeled analog synthesis, synthesizer lead program on top of it. I'm bringing that program in with the CC pedal, and the others are seeing the sustain pedal, but they're actually being assigned to Sostenuto, so I can sustain a program. And once I press the pedal down, it'll hold that and not, not sustain anything else I play. And then my CC pedal will bring in this lead over the top. Now we're going to hear what some of these sequences, these CC sequences, can do. I've assigned them to various parameters, such as tremolo depth and some pitch information. By the way, per program, you have four of these you can assign to different destinations. So as I move the mod wheel, which I set as the controller, we'll hear how it changes the patch. <laughs> So very powerful stuff. I'm going to recap what the instrument highlight features are. Again, an 88-note weighted hammer action keyboard, 256 voices of polyphony, great ability to interface with the outside world, audio inputs now as quarter-inch TRS, real-time controls including nine sliders, nine knobs, nine switches, variation button, great color display, category search ability, and many, many more, plus two gigs of user memory, two gigs of Kurzweil samples in a 28 and a half pound instrument at a great price. If you need more information, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. They'll be glad to help you. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Martirano. <laughs>